You've added the ICOM IC7300 to your shack. Congratulations, it's an awesome radio. I've had mine for several years now and absolutely enjoy it every time I get on the air. However, when you first get the radio, or even after a few years, when you're trying to dive into the settings and menus, it can be a little bit confusing. Not everything is always perfectly clear or explained well, and especially when you're brand new to the radio, um, it can be a little bit daunting to try and figure out where to start. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk from the factory settings to optimized settings to help you get on the air in voice communication and ready to go. So let's dive in. My name is Drew, call sign AC3DS, and you're watching Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. Let's try starting from the very beginning. For me, that means I'm going to have to do a factory reset. So menu, then set, I'm gonna come down to others, I'm gonna choose reset, and all reset. Yes, I'm sure I wanna clear it all. Note, I'm running version 1.41 of the software, and here the radio boots up and it is bringing me right to the 20 meter band. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to wanna to change is located here in the function menu. So I'm gonna click on function, and note that we're given quite a few different functions from which to choose, and the first is the preamp slash attenuator. I'm going to tap on this until it reads off. I don't want the preamp running right away. For automatic gain control, I'm gonna change that from mid to fast. I'm going to leave the notch filter, the noise blanker, and the noise reducer all turned to off for the moment. The IP plus, which deals with like third harmonic stuff in for optimizing receive, uh, it, I'm just gonna leave that off. That's pretty advanced and not necessary for the majority of the time. The voice activation or Vox, I'm not using a headset, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm gonna leave that off as well. The compression though, I am going to turn on. The transmit bandwidth, I'm going to leave as set to wide. And the monitor, I'm going to leave as turned off because I don't want to hear what I'm transmitting when I'm transmitting. If I had a headset, then yeah, I'd probably use that a little bit more often. But I don't, so no worries. All right, I'm gonna click on back here. And so far, we're looking good. But of course, we're not seeing much. So let's see that beautiful scope. I'm gonna hold down the M scope button. And here I get to see the spectrum scope and that waterfall display. And I'm gonna expand it. And so now I can see a little bit more of the, uh, uh, of the band here. So if I start to scroll, You'll notice that I'm currently set to center mode, and that's actually not the, my preference. It is for many people, and that's great. If that's what you enjoy, then awesome. For me, though, I prefer to change it to the fixed, and then not just the fixed, but I prefer the fixed, and I'm gonna hold it down so that it's the scroll fix. And now when I start to scroll, yep, this is the way that I want it, right? I'm gonna but it's kind of slow here, and that's because it's set down to the, the hertz as opposed to up here at the kilohertz. And now I'm gonna be able to scroll around a lot faster. So all right, so that's looking good here. Now I am set to upper sideband, and since I'm focusing on voice in this video, that's exactly where I want it to be for the 20 meter band. Then let's see, what else? What are some other settings that we're gonna, going to want to change? Well, let's take a look at the multi knob, right? So if I press in the multi knob, I can see that my RF power is set to 100%. I don't want that right now. I'm gonna to wanna to change that down to 30. And there's a reason for that, but I'm gonna, I'll get to that in a little bit. My mic gain is currently set to 50%. And my recommendation would be that you set this somewhere between 50 and 70%. For me, 50% is usually pretty good, but I'm gonna change up to 60% here. And then for my compression, again, usually the compression should be somewhere between two and five, and I'm gonna leave that set to, to five. So we're looking good here. Those are some decent settings to start with. The next thing that I'm gonna to want to look at is here in the expand set. I'm gonna hold that down. Now we're given a whole bunch of different options. And the one that I'm going to want to come down to to show you is Let's see here. 
uh, on the waveform color, right? And then down below the, the line and the max hold. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna change my waveform color current, oh, not by holding it down, just by tapping it once. I'm going to change that to be just green. And then I'm gonna change the color line to be red. So I'll change that to be all the way red to 255 red. And then I'm gonna change the max hold and I'm gonna change that to be blue. And I'm gonna max out these colors here. And now what we're gonna see is that the screen is looking a little bit different. And that's starting to look a little bit better. And if I change my edges here uh, to something that's a little bit more um, brought in, a little bit less bandwidth being shown at any point, this is looking pretty good for me. Uh, obviously, you change the colors to work the best that you want them to for you, whatever works well for you. Well, the other settings I think are probably mostly inside of the menu. So let's go there. If I click on menu and then I choose set, you can see that we have two pages of settings, right? Um, the first is the tone control and you're, you have to choose between receive and transmit. So if you're listening to the radio and you feel like it needs more bass or it needs more treble, you can adjust that here and you would adjust it depending on the particular mode that you're in, single sideband, AM, etc. So if I click on single sideband, I can increase or decrease the bass, um, but I'm just going to leave these set to the default settings because honestly, it sounds fine to me. Um, so I'm gonna back out. I can see that the transmit has the same functionality. I can change that as well. And again, I'm feeling pretty good about the bass and the treble. Now, you'll, you'll remember back in the function menu, I had set it that the transmit bandwidth was wide for, um, for single sideband, and you can change the actual bandwidth that you're using here as well. That, that is possible to be adjusted. So just so you know, you do have that ability, that function, but is it necessary? No, not for getting started. It works just fine right out of the box. All right, so what are some other settings for getting started? Well, let's go back into the menu. Let's choose set. Let's choose function. I'm gonna scroll down here and see if there's anything else. RF squelch control, MF band antenna uh, attenuator. We're gonna leave that as being turned on. That, that means that for any of the medium frequency uh, signals that come across, so like those broadcast band, those broadcast uh, uh, signals, uh, those get attenuated by, I think it's 16 dB uh, to help um, not uh, overdoing things, for lack of, of more specificity there. Uh, we're, gonna, we're fine with these settings. Everything is good here. Uh, I'm thinking that everything else is fine. Yeah, we're good. All of this is fine just to get started with, and we can obviously get into some more details later, but all of that is fine. Lastly, let's go into the display. I'm gonna change my backlight for the display. I'm gonna change that from 50 to about 80%, because I like it to, just to be a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to change the, um, if I scroll down here, I'm going to change my call to be my call sign, A, C, uh, three, D, S, enter. And so now, when the radio turns on, it will display that. So let's turn this off and back on. There it comes, we're good. Earlier I had said that uh, I was setting my RF power to 30% and that I'd come back to that. So let's do that right now. So here I am at 14.274 megahertz and I am within my band, but I, my tuner is not turned on. So I'm gonna turn that on by clicking it once, tapping it once, and now I'm going to actually tune by holding it down. Now you heard the relays click a little bit there, which is good. Tells me that it's doing what it's, well, at least it's attempting to do something. And now I'm going to click on menu and SWR, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check and see what the SWR readings are. Now there's, in the manual, there's a, a difference between spot checking the SWR and doing a plot of the SWR. 
For the spot checking of the SWR, it actually says that you should be using the RIDI mode. Um, however, in practice, and actually in the book, it doesn't specify what you should be using for the SWR graph or plotting it. Now, I've tested this a, both a bunch of times in a bunch of different ways, and I've never been able to find a difference between RIDI and uh, single sideband. So I usually don't worry about switching it over to be in RIDI. Now, I realize that there is the idea of sending a constant power out versus not. But again, in practice, I've not been able to find any distinction between the two um, in terms of graphing results. So again, I'm, I'm not worried about it. So let's do this. Let's just quickly uh, tune and check. So again, I have tuned. So it's it's tuned and now I'm going to click play and I can, I'm just clicking through, I'm using the push to talk button here on my, uh, on my mic and I can see that the SWR graph is non-existent because I'm running at a really low one-to-one -one SWR, which again is really good. So I'm feeling really good and I'm feeling like now I'm ready to transmit. I hope that that was helpful. If you have any questions, thoughts, feedback, anything that you think that maybe I missed or didn't cover well, um, of course, if I come across anything, I will definitely either pin it to the top of the comments or add it to the show notes. And feel free to like, subscribe, share, notify, all of that stuff. We'll see you next time. Until then.